So, should you care about these older guns? Short answer, mm, yeah. Not so short answer, still yeah, but really only a select amount. So, with the new exotic mission rotator, a bunch of past season weapons will be available for each of the three exotic missions available. Presage from Season 13, Vox Obscura from Season 16, and Operation Seraph Shield from Season 19. When I'm able to get guaranteed deep sights a week, albeit on a rotator, I statistically live longer. Trust. Here is what each mission will offer in very fast format before actual breakdown. For the weapons, not me. Have a read, because to be honest, I don't feel like reading the names of 20 plus weapons. Thanks. You, you still there? Okay, cool. This is honestly very good since many popular weapons that people, including myself, are using now are going to have a guaranteed source again. Each mission has some hot items and that is something we'll be going through together in a bit. Teamwork, am I right? Take a look at the twid twab in the description for a full breakdown of how rewards work. Let's talk about what weapons are neato. I think it's obvious, but I'll say it anyway, not all weapons will be talked about in great explicit detail since they're not all that stellar. This is what I think after all, and while I'm not the smartest, ah. some may have become meh months later, or were already pretty meh. Good perks, bad perks, better in one place, not so good in others, and so on. And don't forget, a lot of primaries have got their damage fall off changed, with most being able to hit a bit further, but feeling the fall off more throughout. Rangefighter has also become less necessary. And don't forget, if you have the glimmer and cause, you can level a weapon up to whatever level you need to get your desired perks this season, so you can create your role almost instantly. Starting with Haunted Weapons from Presage. Awesome looking weapons, spooky names, some not so spooky performances. Firefry and Tears of Contrition are really just more precision weapons. Very alright perk pools, not that exciting, but they're fine at what they can do. You're probably better gravitating toward an exotic auto instead, and there are other fan favourite precision scouts like Vision of Cornflakes and Hung Jury, which are much more exciting. However, since those are more difficult to obtain, this is a fine scout to have on hand. Autos seem to be doing quite well in PvP right now, so while it's not very perky, Firefright may be a nice starter. Bumpeth in the Nighteth is also similar in that it's not so exciting, any more that is. With the chill clip nerf, the rocket got slapped a bit, plus with cold comfort literally in the game, the spook launcher has been crept out in terms of perks and raw damage. Nezarak's Whisper definitely whispered something all right. While Glaives may not be very good right now, this one is pretty good for what it is. Now, while there aren't any major Glaive buffs till next season, you can get a decent roll of Impulse Amplifier and Frenzy, with Impulse almost being a must for that projectile speed and reload help. In PvP, Glaives are actually pretty good. The shield is powerful and a kill is not that difficult to come by. Even the melee can be good when you can virtually teleport to an enemy from further than you think. Without remorse, another gun of this set that looks cool but really isn't that exciting. To me, this will be more for PvP. This did come out before the shotgun reticle changes in Season 19, which kind of ruined lightweight shotguns by giving them more spread than other archetypes. However, this was adjusted a bit in the most recent mid-season patch, tightening the spread a bit. For a PvP role, get that range and handling. Steady hands could work if you can manage primary battles, could even use hipfire grip if ADSing is too painful. Pairing this with the Vorpal for super combat is a possibility too, or you could just go for fragile focus range. Or, if you love Ark, looking at you holding W Titans, you may want Elemental Capacitor for that crisp max handling. Now a popular type of weapon, Hollow Denial, a trace rifle which might as well be a primary weapon, with special. This is currently the only Void Trace and while not that much of a perk selection, it can get a very good clearing roll of Lead from Gold for more ammo, and Killing Tally, a very good add clearing perk and can even do some single target damage at max stacks. Highly recommend crafting this one as personally I think this is the best out of the 6. And yes, double special may be fixed, but that doesn't mean trace rifles are going anywhere, so definitely craft this. You could swap out Killing Tally for Repulsor Brace for those on-demand overshields. Even so, I'm still going for Tally. Now to the juicier weapons. The opulent weapons are some of the best. Ostringer is a very solid Kinetic 140 and always has been. With the rangefinder not as necessary now, and the damage fall off changes, this thing is still at the top with decent perks. A PvP gun indeed, able to get Eye of the Storm, maybe Snapshot, Opening Shot, Rangefinder, and maybe even Zen Moment for consoles. A great feeling hand cannon all around, which is something that many people desire. Sticking with PvP, Drang was always a menace, being the most used sidearm many months back, to the point where it got directly nerfed. Not by much, but enough to balance it a bit. You're able to get quite the range of kills with this for a sidearm. 
For your choices, you'll likely want to go for Eye of the Storm or Moving Target along with a damage perk like Swash or Rampage, but even without solid perks, this is still a solid sidearm. I have been hearing though that short range weapons do actually feel like short range weapons now, so keep that in mind. Then we have Beloved, probably my favourite sniper. This was one of my most used weapons back before it got sunset, when it was sunset and when it returned last year. I love it. A solid adaptive sniper with mid zoom and desirable perks for a sniper. Most people will easily gravitate towards that snappy AF snapshot and quick draw, but personally I've always enjoyed moving target more for those small extra benefits. I'm not over here making montages and needing to switch out faster than my brain can react. You may also want to run firmly planted providing many benefits or even incandescent which can actually end up being very useful on players grouped together. Like an incendiary nade, or well I guess many solar things now, Scorch can let you track a player's location for a bit while they're burning. Could be very helpful in any PvP mode, especially comp or trials. All in all, a great sniper and highly recommend if you enjoy sniping at all. Lastly we have Callus Mini Tool, which was easily overlooked in the past. However, once it got reinstated last year, it became a monster as it was able to get incandescent. While in actuality it isn't the greatest perk, being able to set alight groups of enemies that really have a thing for you and possibly ignite them is hugely satisfying and quite effective. Literally, who doesn't love explosions, that's why people love it. Sure, other SMGs are similar, but there's just something about this one that really speaks to you. Maybe it's because of how snappy it is or how it's one of the best crowd control primaries, I don't know. But this is a great PvE SMG, alongside ones like Funnel Web and another we'll talk about in a bit. Highly recommend it, you could pair Incandescent with Threat Detector, which could have permanent uptime due to always being in the fray for optimal damage or unrelenting for easy health, even though abilities are out of control right now, like that one Titan aspect. If you don't feel like exploding everything, you could as easily use Feeding Frenzy or Surrounded for big relays or damage respectively. Moving on to Risen Weapons from Vox Obscura, the first craftable season weapon set. Starting with Peace of Mind, which to me is a very solid rapid fire. I've used it in both PvE and P, and I can honestly say it wrecks in both. In PvE, I haven't used it in a while since, besides exotics, pulses haven't felt the greatest in a while, but you can still chuck on Overflow and Focus Fury for something pretty alright, or maybe even Stats for All or Adrenaline Junkie, depending on your playstyle. In PvP, this is where this thing shines a lot to me. You could chuck on Perpetual or Heating Up along with Elemental Capacitor or Moving Target and this thing will literally tuck you into bed. This thing took me through, I want to say, a couple Solo Floors Trials cards and a Confidence card, so in short, Yes, I recommend. Sweet Sorrow is, I think, my favourite legendary auto rifle with the simple combo of stats for all, one for all, which feels like a no-brainer pick, though you could go for triple tap and focus fury for more focused and continued damage or even demo for nades. Really though, stats and one is such a solid role in anything and it makes this auto feel great and pairs well with its origin trait. Plus it sounds great to shoot, for me at least. There's really not much else I can say for this. Uh, solid primary and my definitely meaningful stamp of approval. <laughs> Explosive Personality, the only non-sunset solar waveframe, is good as a baseline standard for waveframe GLs I think, with a very obvious one way above. But we're not here for that. I used this one a lot before I got my Forb, especially when it was Solar Mayhem in Season 17. And as is probably known, waveframes in general are just really good for clearing out groups. I think this is a good non-raid friendly option as it can get some decent combos like good old stats and one for all. Reload on a waveframe is always helpful so Feeding Frenzy is fine here too or even Genesis for an auto reload on shield breaks which could then be paired with turnabout or even disruption break. Auto loading is always good for swapping and Frenzy is an easy choice, even Golden Tricon with the high ability uptime right now. Basically there's a perk combo here for many different playstyles so take your pick, it's a solid GL. Under your skin is really just another bow. Legendary bows are really just outclassed in PvE by exotic ones, and in PvP they're alright, but not for everyone obviously. If you want perks, anything that gives you more stats, damage, or lessens draw speed is good. Recurring impact is similar where it's just here living. I'm not the biggest fan of rapid fire MGs since Delirium left us. It does have some potential with stats and one for all, subsistence or frenzy, but it's just outclassed by better ones in other archetypes. There is a non-raid friendly machine gun, which we'll get into later. 
A similar situation with our final weapon, Thoughtless, where raid ones are really just a better option, like Succession or Supremacy in PvE. Or as mentioned previously, Beloved, or even Mercurial Overreach from Comp for PvP. They are in the energy slot though, so this may be a kinetic choice for you. It does have decent PvP perks like Perpetual, Firmly Planted, Snapshot or Quick Draw, but if you want this for PvE, that's fine. Snipers just aren't really it still. Even after their 10% buff, Lastly, we have Seraph weapons from Seraph's Shield. Starting with Disparity, a 4 burst pulse, an archetype that I personally like a lot. I've used this in both PvE and P quite a bit and I can say that when it hits, it hits. A rapid hit frenzy roll in PvE is a solid pick that will make life much smoother. In PvP, you actually have quite a few choices. Eye of the Storm, rapid hit again. Outlaw, heating up, moving target, desperado, rare but potent, kill clip, swashbuckler or headseeker. Anything that can help with stats like reload and stability will be great. And then something to improve damage, which in that last column is basically anything that I mentioned, including Desperado, which technically improves DVS through an RPM increase. All in all, a great pulse. Just like Hollow Denial from earlier, Path of Least Resistance is a solid trace rifle. There are a couple of PvE roles here that you may like. One is the simple stats and one for all. Yes, I've mentioned it heaps, but there are just no downsides to tickling a few enemies and having your gun beef up for 10 seconds. Instead of one for all though, you could use Volt Shot instead, which is still so so good despite Jolt being nerfed a bit some months back. A quick reload with stats for all, and then everything can get shocked to the next dimension. Another perk that people like is Shoot to Loot, which isn't the greatest for every situation, but can come in handy in a damage phase if you have bricks around and don't want to go on a journey to grab it then return for damage. Not to mention reloading. Could always craft two if you feel like it, but having at least one of these around is a great choice to make. The next special weapon is the first aggressive stabby stab, Judgment of Kelgarath, which was a slave to get back when it came out due to a new perk close to melee, which upon a projectile kill gives a bonus to glaive melee damage that can be extended through more damage. A pretty solid perk, but besides that this glaive actually has a lot going for it, from ability generating perks to overflow, wellspring, incandescent, impulse amp, and even surrounded. If you're a glaive aficionado, then this one is for you. In PvP land, the same thing as Nezarax, it's good, then it just depends on what rate of fire you want, adaptive or aggressive. Fire and Forget, honestly pretty forgettable as the name suggests. Perk pool doesn't really inspire anything in me, it is a rarer variant since it's a 3 burst, but compared to say Ron's Briar's Contempt, this thing is doo doo. Plus you can get a free type hunter craft, yes it's a single shot, but arguably way better since its perk selection is much more exciting and is capable of having vice stinger, so this weapon isn't one to really worry about IMO. Then one of the bet wait, oh wait. Some more, that's only five, I'm getting one. Uh, wait, uh, oh, this bow. Uh, Tripwire Canary, yeah, as I said, with Under Your Skin, this is just another legendary bow, it seems. Although Lightweight's got buffed a bit, legendaries are still just here. Perks are again very easy, just grab stat or damage perks. Forgot this existed, TBH. Anyway, back to one of the better weapons and currently a very good and now easy to get again machine gun, Retrofit Escapad. Es Escapad? Yeah. Retrofit Escapad. You've probably heard about this one before, but it was very good due to a volatile bug when it came out that got fixed, but that didn't stop this from being a very good legendary machine gun. I'm not the biggest fan of rapid fires, but this has some very strong perk combos and can pump out a good amount of damage quickly. I even crafted two. That should say something. One for crowd control, the simple stats and one for all, and then the very popular one which Banshee sold right after this season launch, fourth times the charm and target lock. As long as you're accurate, you can keep firing this thing for quite a bit. And why not just chuck easy to proc damage here since this thing fires faster than my synapses. Enter target lock. If you can't get commemoration, this is a great void substitute, highly recommend for a good machine gun. Now with the four Seraph weapons, the Sniper, like most rapid fire legendary snipers, has some good combos for PvE, but then it wholly depends if you're either going to use it or let it catch dust in your vault. Again, snipers are alright, and this one is a fine one to use. Next is a shotgun, infamous back in the day, is similar in that it has decent perks, but pellet shotties just aren't used that much in PvE, unless it can get some melee related perks, which it can. 
You got Pugilist, which synergizes really well with Trench Barrel, One-Two Punch, or Swashbuckler. If you don't want melee stuff, then you still got other options like Threat Detector and Surrounded. But for me, I'd rather use a lightweight shoddy or slower RPM if I'm using melee related perks for more damage on the shot, which will be ready again by the time I want to shoot again. With the primaries, the hand cannon is just, you know, a hand cannon. It's a precision frame, so different recoil, and not the most popular of the archetypes. I have been hearing recently though that precisions are feeling nicer due to the range changes, so maybe you might look this one's way if it had literally any PvP perks. The only rule you may use is Rapid Hit, which you only notice half of since stability is much less of a concern on these and Rampage. In PvE, I guess you could use it since hand cannons are feeling amazing right now, but I wouldn't use a precision there. But your choice. And finally, the last weapon, the final shit, the SMG. Very, very popular in both PvE and even P. For PvE, you'll easily want to go for the awesome role of Feeding Frenzy Volt Shot, which synergize very well with each other. Get kills, ramp up that reload, shock the entire room, rinse and repeat. I love this thing a lot. One of the top crowd control primaries and part of the popular SMGs. If you don't feel like shocking everything, you could go for Surrounded instead, which works well for an SMG, or Threat Detector instead of Feeding Frenzy for less need to slay out. For PvP is quite the options with Killing Wind, Dynamic Sway, Petrol, Rangefinder, if you aren't faced about the damage fall off changes, Tap the Trigger, even Gutshot Straight, or hell, Volt Shot if you're fancy like that. A solid SMG all around and an easy choice. Oh my god. There we go. What I think is worth crafting and looking out for has been laid out before you. Take this info as you will. If you are even still here, you have my undying respect and gratitude. I think you're really effing cool. Appreciate you, stranger. Hopefully you found this at all helpful, and if you enjoyed your stay, dropping a like or sub is greatly appreciated, and will get you 27 drops of your desired red border. Don't question me, I know that. If you're not up to date with some of the more less talked about changes, or the most recent patch, might I suggest these little guys here. I'm talking about the videos, I swear. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll talk to y'all later.